Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel Demo Graphics with part two of the Swamp Think build. Um, in this episode we're going to look at the rest of the process up until completion of the bike and uh, we're going to talk about some of my thoughts and feelings about the bike and look at the end result. Also I just had my 38th birthday and this burner t-shirt was a present from my sister so top points to my sister for that and uh, yeah let's get into it so I'm using a block and this wire wall for the really high spots um, you can see some here uh, just to take off the high spots on the on this bodywork and then I'm going to use a sponge sanding pad afterwards so given the frame a rub down with some sandpaper and um, I used the sanding pad, the foam pad as well and wiped it down with some nail polish remover just to take any loose dust off and now I'm going to try and do some filler, some car filler just to bring the bodywork up nice second uh, lot of filler just smoothing it out, fine tuning it so the frame's been fillered, repaired, all the bodywork sanded down. We can probably lay on the um, second coat of primer tomorrow, sand that down, and then begin painting blue. Okay, so I've just given the, the frame another coat of primer after sanding. I sanded it down with a smooth sandpaper and now we've sprayed it with uh, another coat of primer obviously there's still a few little imperfections that are showing up um, I might put some more filler in this area here just to just to make that completely flat sand it down again and spray with some more primer there's a dink here and a dink here which I'd like to fill uh, but yeah we're getting there you can't even tell on the um, head tube that there was any dinks in the head tube at all so I walk around the head tube you can see it's looking good so the primer is dry um, because the weather's not great today I'm just going to spray a light dust of uh, black as a guide coat so that I can sand it down with uh, wet sandpaper uh, 400 grit wet sandpaper so we're just literally spraying on a dust and we're going to sand off the speckles so it's a guide coat just to smooth in the primer so that it's going to be ready for the paint so when we spray the paint it will be nice and smooth see that is dedication out here sanding it down in stormy weather it's all right though because it's wet sandpaper so even if it rains I can still crack on and make it all nice and smooth for spraying put another layer of primer on there it's looking real fresh real smooth looking good smooth So I've got warm soapy water here. So the frame's been sanded down with wet 400 paper. And I've now got a can of Loop San Paolo 379 color, the new Loop color. And I'm just gonna give it a base coat with this fresh blue. And I've wiped down, I've wiped down the bike with some degreaser as well. Yeah. 
starting to take take shape now. First layer of blue's been added. First coat, base coat of the blue. BMX videos. Yeah. Found these uh, V bars in the attic. Uh, gonna give them a sand down and uh, take the the grips off. Respray black, and this will be used for the swamp burner. I'm going to sand them down. I've taken the grips off. I'm gonna sand all the paint off. Getting down to the metal again, and then prime and spray black for the swamp burner. So I've sanded the V-bars down using the electric drill and the wire cup. And I wore PPE, so a gas mask and uh, goggles. I can't stress enough how important it is to wear these goggles because the last thing you want, believe me, is one of these wire brush bristles in your eye and they do fly out they do ping off and fly out so it is really important to wear some goggles if you are like electric sanding and stripping some paint off the rest I'm going to do by hand just get these little bits off with some sandpaper and then we'll be degreasing it and it'll be ready for some primer So the bars are fully stripped now. I'm going to give them a wipe down. Uh, you would normally use degreaser, but I'm using um, some airbrush cleaner, which I find to be sufficient, and that will remove any grease or any dirt, loose dirt from the bars before I primer. I've sanded down the handlebars with 400 grit. It's now ready for spraying black. So I've been using loop black on the handlebars. You can see it's nice and shiny. It's the loop black. I've been using this San Paolo 379 loop blue for the frame. I'm just using the heat gun to cure the paint on the handlebars and it's important to do this at every stage of painting so that the paint hardens and cures and then later on you get a nice hard paint coat which isn't going to scratch or flake off. So today I'm going to lay down a few coats of lacquer on the bars, um, just praying that the weather holds out for me today. I'm going to start off by giving it a wipe down with a tack cloth, just get any fine bits of dirt 
brushed off and then I'm going to wipe it down with a degreaser and then we're going to lay down a few coats of lacquer. Just sprayed on the uh, first coat of lacquer and we're going to let that rest for 15 minutes in the sun and then we'll come back and do the second coat. So I've passed the heat gun over it twice to cure the paint and make sure the paint's gone hard and uh, now it's time to add some lacquer coats. Oh, she got that wet wet. Look at that, the wet wet. She got that wet wet. Fifth coat going on now. This coat, the lacquer. Cheese, wet. Look at that, sparkling. So the weather's a bit touch and go today, so I've made this very sketchy makeshift tent and I'm cracking on with the build um, doing some more lacquer, two coats of lacquer on the forks to bring the forks up to seven coats like the rest of the frame so yeah we're cracking on regardless of the weather British weather eh? so I've got these uh, old um, pad set, rally pad set and they're a bit old and faded so I'm going to give them a little scrub with the uh, rejuvenator and then at a later date I might re-dye them yellow so they're back to their former glory but for now we're just going to clean them up So I've got this original, you can see, original rally, rally burner seat, blue seat. It's got a lot of chunks, gouges missing out of it, especially on the front. Pretty bad condition, but I'm going to try and restore it. Um, been watching some videos on how to restore plastic, so I'm going to use a soldering iron to kind of smooth out some of the gouges and then sand it down with sandpaper and try and get it back to being smooth again so yeah here goes so my first attempt with the soldering iron worked pretty well as you can see I've melted and smoothed out a lot of the gouges from the front of the seat and now we've got to work on the back of the seat. You can see it looks like someone's dog's been chewing on it. But we're going to smooth out the plastic on the back of the seat with a soldering iron. And then sand it down. Look at that. All the chunks smoothed off. Now it's a question of just sanding it down. So smoothing it up. better than it was so I've got the uh, stickers on on the forks it's going to give them a little bit of heat just to warm up the glue and press the stickers down a bit more just get that glue activated and really get these stickers stuck on so the finishing touches these little uh, fork stops go in Pop them in like that. I've got a set of forks. Yeah, so it's up, this upside down 
on here but it's the right way round for the frame so obviously when you spin the frame round it'll be perfect it's looking smart bottom brackets on I use this cheap tool that I got off eBay basically to apply pressure from both sides a bit of grease and squash them back in next I've got to do the bracket for the headset and then we can start putting it together so I thought I'd bless the bike with a spider crank might be a bit tight but yeah it's on there now maybe loosen it up a bit So it's smooth now. I sanded it with 100 grit, which was quite coarse, to get some of it off. And then I used 1,200, which is a wet paper, and then 2,000, which is very fine. It's really smooth now. So now I'm going to run the heat gun over it and see if it makes it shiny again. So we'll have a look now. See a bit of change happening. Heat is having an effect. Definitely, definitely doing something, making it bluer. See, it's starting, it's starting to turn bluer. You see here, it's all white. Run the heat gun over it. Starts to turn blue on. So that's as good as it's going to get with a heat gun. But yeah, it looks a lot better now. It's gone like a nice blue. Um, it's really warm, really hot at the moment. It's a touch. It's still on fire. But yeah, I might paint in the rally sign on each side with yellow paintbrush. But yeah, there you go. It's still got that old school worn look to it, but it's not bad. It's still, you know, it could look, you could mistake it for a survivor condition. I'm opening up the uh, Maxi Cross pedals. Um, gonna re grease them. So once you pop this edge off with a screwdriver, you get access to the inside, all the bearings in there. So you unscrew those bolts, you get to the bearings and you can re-grease the bearings.
So by the time I had finished and completed this build, I was very happy with the end result. Um, there were a few niggly things that I didn't like, like the, the finish in the lacquer and um, yeah, just the fact that I used spray paints. But this was a fun project. So on talking about how I feel about the bike, um, it's important to remember that the, this project was just a fun build to pass some time it was not never to be taken too seriously now i say this because i recently posted a picture of the bike the finished bike which i was proud of on the facebook rally bernard enthusiast page i was expecting to get positive comments but people watched part one of the video and people always have something to say and it's not always going to be positive. So I have to accept that, that people are going to have their own opinions. But the, what they were pointing out was I used milliput, a putty, and filler on the holes on the, the frame of the bike. Now, I know structurally welding would be a lot stronger and probably the best way to go. But during lockdown, nobody wanted to touch the frame. I took the um, bike frame to a couple of welders and they didn't want to touch it because it was full of rust and had holes in it and they didn't like the sight of it. They didn't want to take on a job that they felt could come back to haunt them later on down the line. So I looked at other alternatives and because the bike frame, I probably paid 20 or 30 pounds off Facebook like years ago for the rusty old frame and it was just sitting in my garage in in a shed so it would never have been built probably if I did if I hadn't had all this time to do something with it and um, I just decided let's do it so that's why I went down the route of doing it myself spraying it and using putty and rust um, uh, rust primer and uh, yeah, it was just meant to be a bit of fun. Nothing, I didn't go overboard on the budget. I didn't spend masses of money. It's a very cheap build. So it was literally just a bit of fun. And I think that's what people are missing the point. The point was just to create something out of something that wasn't very nice in the first place. And I feel that I've achieved that. And I am going to put my milliput to the test. So I'm gonna take my bike to some um, tracks, some racing tracks. Um, also going to take it to a skate park and probably get someone to do a backflip on it. So if you stay tuned, we're going to put this frame through the works and you know, not deliberately smash it up, but put pressure on it and see how, if it can stand up to the pressure. Um, and that will be the deciding factor and whether you know you might want to use mini put to patch up a hole so closer look at the bike it's got the Sugino crank spider crank and the crank arms and uh, we've got a wheel tensioner on the back we've got the cheapo UTs which aren't so cheap anymore um, but yeah they're going for a bit got duro tires on the back and these are like you know comp knockoffs and we got the um, yellow brake pads 
Weenman brakes, the lollipop uh, reflector, and we've got the Rally Burner original clamp. It's a bit rusty, but uh, it's, like I said, it's just a bit of fun. We threw on some reconditioned maxi cross pedals which I opened up and I re-greased the bearings. We, I know that the, the outer edge of them scuffed up but this isn't a show bike this is just a bit of fun to make it look a bit better than what it was. If we look under here this is where this is where we had the worst rust affected area. So just right here is where I put the filler putty and there's no cracks coming back um, we look around the frame in this area just in here is where I puttied um, and there were some spots on the frame which were puttied but I can't honestly I can't tell where the putty was now because it looks so nice we've got a new bottom bracket with bearings in there Got the got the SR stem Cobra grips, nice brakes, and we've got a Diacomp blue cables. So I think that's everything. Oh yeah, and some some pads. I tried to dye the pads, and they're a bit better than what they were, but they still look pretty old. And faded but not as faded so it gives it that old school look I guess oh yes and uh, we've got the original rally burner blue seat there and I I now know that the um, the decals are the wrong way round on the forks but that doesn't bother me seems to trigger a lot of other people but I'm looking at it as if you're standing looking at the burner from up here you can read that the right way round but obviously to those purists that's not acceptable anyway i like the look of the bike in general um i've had some good comments people said they like it and um i had an old fella pull up he said is that a rally burner and i said yes and uh I said they're collectible now and uh, he was like oh I've got one I've kept from my son in in my shed and I'm gonna pass it on down to my grandson which I thought was nice he was really excited to see his bike when I was doing the photo shoot 